Lufthansa gets worse and worse every time I fly them. Why do I keep buying their tickets? Join me on a typical Lufthansa economy class experience today on Marcus Travels. I'm flying from Basel, Switzerland, first on a regional jet to Munich, and then on an Airbus A320 to Gothenburg, Sweden. I paid for this trip myself, so you get an independent, authentic travel review. This trip went off the rails before it even began. The online check-in just wouldn't work. I'm logged into my Lufthansa account. I select my flight and try to check in, but it just kicks me out to the home page. This is such a basic function, it should just work. Instead, I had to go through the not logged in route with my booking code and my name in order to access the check-in. In the past, you were always able to select a seat at check-in for free. Now, Lufthansa has even taken that away for the economy light fare. Although they do say a seat change for all passengers can be done later in the check-in process, but that change is not for free. What if I complete the check-in process and then try to change seats afterwards once I'm already checked in? Well, it's the same message. So we're not getting free seat selection at check-in, even as a Star Gold status passenger. This is the behavior of a low-cost carrier masquerading as a full-service airline. Let's get to the airport via the Basel train station. To skip ahead to the aircraft or any other part of the video, use the chapter markings on the timeline. This trip to Gothenburg, Sweden begins here at the Basel SBB railway station. But before I jump on the airport bus, I'm going to pick up some delicious chocolates in that Lederach store right there behind me. This is not sponsored content. It is really just my favorite brand of Swiss chocolates. You can't really get these anywhere else outside of Switzerland. One of the specialties of Lederach is what they call fresh chocolate or Frischoggi in Swiss German. They have these whole sheets of different flavors and you can get any size you want and pay by weight. I just went with the ready-made boxes for my Christmas gifts. All right, it's time to go. Let's head downstairs and jump on the airport bus to the Euro airport. The bus to the Euro airport just outside of Basel is part of the normal public transit system. You just get a three zone ticket from the vending machines at any bus stop or tram station and you'll be at the airport in 16 minutes. During the journey, you'll cross from Switzerland to France where the airport is physically located. You can see us crossing the border right here. The first flight is operated by a regional jet. That means that there is a limited bag space on the aircraft. Before leaving home, I got an email offering me to check in my carry-on bag for free. Here we are at the Euro airport. I'm doing hand luggage only today, so I'm going to walk up the steps, go through security, and I'll see you on the other side. The x-ray machine apparently didn't like the camera in my backpack, but we got through and now we're heading for the lounge. Welcome to the Skyview lounge here at the Euro airport. Really one of my favorite lounges. Not because of the food, because the food is usually in very low quality and today it was particularly atrocious. You know, the thing I like about the Skyview lounge is that there's so much space and there's almost never any people here. As for example today, it is pretty much completely empty. In addition, we have nice views of the airfield, plenty of seating, plenty of sunlight as well. It's a nice lounge. As I'm chilling in the lounge, about one hour prior to departure, I got an email saying that we'll depart at 13.20 instead of 12.55. About 20 minutes later, I got another email that said the flight will depart at 12.55 after all. It didn't. The flight was delayed fully in line with my experience and expectations on Lufthansa. Another thing I like about the Skyview Lounge is that they serve Cremant d'Alsace, which is a local sparkling wine. I bet this wine was grown here within walking distance of the airport itself, right here in Alsace in France. So let's finish this glass of wine and head out to the Lufthansa flight, which will take us to Munich on board the CRJ 900. At the gate, everybody with the larger carry-on bags was requested to gate-check them. I took them up on the offer, 
but this turned out to be a mistake, as you'll see when we land. I put my beloved Osprey backpack on the cart and headed up the stairs. These air stairs are very steep. If you have limited mobility, it will be difficult for you to climb them. On board the CRJ900 regional jet, the seats are laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. There is a so-called business class section in the front, but it's just the same economy class seats with the aisle seat blocked off. These seats are fine for the one hour flight to Munich. Welcome aboard the Lufthansa Cityline CRJ900. The real problem with the CRJ900 is the lack of overhead bin space. I probably could have fit my backpack up there, but only because I had priority boarding and the bins were not full yet. The backpack would have filled up the whole compartment. The service on board is a bottle of water and a piece of chocolate, which is fine. Flying this CRJ900 is not going to be a great experience, regardless of what you do. I just landed in Munich. We're gonna take the metro train to the Kilo gates. I checked in my bag under the delivery at the aircraft regime where they did in fact deliver my backpack to me at the aircraft entrance, but they placed it on the wet ground. And now it's all wet and nasty and I have to carry it around. That is a bad choice, Lufthansa, don't do that. The handling agents could at least have leaned my backpack against the other bags so that it's upright and only the bottom would get wet. This was a highly unprofessional way to handle my bag on a wet day. Usually when I connect in Munich within the Schengen passport free area, the flights arrive and depart at the same terminal. This time I had to transfer between terminals and they have a little underground metro for this. It's a minor inconvenience to have to transfer terminals, but at least Munich is a much better airport than Lufthansa's other hub at Frankfurt. Welcome to perhaps the shortest visit to the Lufthansa Senator Lounge here in Munich. I like this lounge, I really wish that I had a little bit more time, but uh, boarding is going to start in less than 10 minutes. So I'm just going to grab something super quick to eat, bathroom break, and then I'm going to run over to the aircraft to Gothenburg. The original title of this video was going to be something along the lines of the only way to endure Lufthansa in economy class via Munich. And the thing that would save me from misery was access to the lounge. Because of the delay of the incoming flight, I didn't get more than a few minutes in the lounge. I only grabbed a pretzel and a bathroom break. I was disappointed to not get more time in the lounge because I know that this is a very nice star gold lounge. Munich airport overall is a very nice airport. It's modern, it's bright, and it has these moving walkways everywhere. It also has these self-boarding gates, which I love. They do announce the boarding groups over the loudspeakers and on the displays, but the boarding area was a total zoo today. You can also hear various alarms sounding at boarding, but nobody seems to care. Priority boarding worked really well today because of my star gold status, and I was on board in no time. On this Airbus 320, the seats are laid out in a 3 plus 3 configuration. Once again, there is a so-called business class section up front, but it only means an economy seat where the middle seat is blocked. Welcome aboard the Lufthansa A320 that's going to take us from Munich to Gothenburg. I was annoyed by the delay in arrival and the fact that I was not able to get any time in the lounge. I was annoyed that they didn't actually start the boarding when they said I could have had an extra 10 minutes in the lounge. Nonetheless, we are here now on board, ready to go in maybe 20 minutes or so, and I'm looking forward to this flight up to Gothenburg, Sweden. At some point in the very near future, I will learn to record video where the window light is actually hitting my face and is not blowing up the background. But that day is not today. Let's fly. This Airbus A320 is a very standard short haul aircraft. It does provide better bin space than the CRJ900. 
The seat is this very slim Recaro seat, and I know that some people hate it. I think it's fine. I actually like it. For the two-hour flight up to Gothenburg, it's not a bad seat at all. In front of you, there is a literature pocket at the top of the seat, then the tray table is in the middle, and then you have this storage pouch at the bottom of the seat. The seat also features coat hooks. The legroom is certainly limited. For an intra-European economy class flight, you can't expect anything. I was going to say that you can't expect anything more, but my original statement stands. As we take off on a rainy December afternoon, it's a good time to reflect on what, if anything, makes Lufthansa a full-service carrier. The economy light fare doesn't include any bag allowance. These days, you can't even select a seat without paying. This is the offering of a low-cost carrier. But what about the service? Well, a few years ago, Lufthansa at least offered free drinks and a sandwich on these routes. And that's something that I really appreciated back in the before times of 2019. But not anymore. Now it's buy on board. And the selection is fine. I bought this sandwich and a bottle of Apfelschorle. The sandwich came wrapped in paper and in a paper box. I love the fact that Lufthansa is getting rid of plastic wrappers. The sandwich was actually really tasty, and in fact, it was the best meal on this whole trip, because the lounge in Basel serves prison food, and I missed out on the lounge in Munich. I'm so bitter about the Munich lounge, because I know that they have really good hot meals there. If you got value so far, hit the like button. Thank you for supporting Marcus Travels. As we arrive in Gothenburg, I think to myself, what sets apart a legacy carrier like Lufthansa from EasyJet or Ryanair? And the answer is essentially nothing for the average traveler. In both cases, you have to pay for everything separately, but at least EasyJet offers you a lower price. The only difference in my mind is that Lufthansa is a member of the Star Alliance. And if you have status, you do get certain perks, like lounge access and priority boarding. But these days, you don't get an extra bag allowance on the economy light tickets. Welcome to Gothenburg Landwetter Airport. This flight on Lufthansa is over. And as expected, it was a pretty disappointing affair but at least Lufthansa is delivering as per my expectations. If EasyJet offered this route from Basel to Gothenburg, I'd book it in a heartbeat. Until that happens, I will unfortunately keep flying Lufthansa, despite the poor service, because there is no better alternative. EasyJet does operate from Basel to Copenhagen in Denmark, and I have flown that route regularly for years. On this trip, however, my return from Copenhagen was on Air Baltic. Click or tap the screen right here to watch the full video featuring the excellent Air Baltic A220, my favorite narrow-body aircraft. Thank you for watching Marcus Travels.